Good evening, everybody. It has been a hot minute. Um, now, I know I said in a previous video that I was going to start the routine um, Sunday, but I'm already doing makeup. I might as well do it now. So, if you head over to my Instagram page, I did a week of video game um, makeup looks, and then this week I did classic horror movie. I'm working on my makeup look of um, Karen from Night of the Living Dead, um, a good classic black and white film. So let's hop right into it. It's just a messy sort of zombie look, so there's really nothing at all to it. So I thought I would continue with the story that I've been promising for weeks. It's part two of my uh, time at the Lutheran School of the Miami Valley, my favorite school. So... I've picked out three different outrageous stories to share with you. I'm trying not to make this a long video, but if it is, just go ahead and wander through. Just, I enjoy that you're here with me. So the first story is, <laughs> it's hilarious. I actually had forgotten about it until I was looking through my yearbook. Um, I know y'all had fire drills when you were in school. Basically, they were, some of them were planned. Like, sometimes my school would be like, hey, we're doing a fire drill today. We're not going to tell you what time, but there's a fire drill coming. Then other days, they would just do a rando and you'd be like, oh my gosh, it's a fire drill. Let's hurry up. So, this had been quite often in my school that they would just surprise us with the fire drills. I don't know what possessed us this day. But I was in uh, fifth grade, Miss Holzander's class, and it was it was late. It was weird because usually we did do fire drills late, like it would be last thing of the day, basically like at 2.30. <laughs> um, so we heard the fire drill go off, and for some reason, my class didn't take it seriously at all. We were like, this is just a drill. Now, mind you, I didn't. There were a few good apples in the class. I ain't gonna point out who were the bad seeds, Saber Dunlap. Um, but I really didn't play around. I was kind of not taking it seriously because I'm like, you know, you guys do this way too often. You know, we'd be having fire drills like once a month. I'm like, we've been doing this. You have the same students. We know what the fire drills are. We've been doing them for four, five, six, seven years, you know. So we go to the playground and how it was set up was each class would be in a line. Now, mind you, at St. Mark's, it started at third grade and at that time went up to uh, sixth grade. So there were third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, sixth grade, and then the teacher in front. And usually our extracurricular teachers, you know, gym teacher, Spanish, music, they would stand in one corner, staff would be in another corner, and then last person out of the building had to be our principal, Mrs. Wyant. Um, it was just, I don't know if all schools do that, but that was how we did it. She would be the last person. So she burned, she burned. And, you know, I know she did it lovingly, you know, sacrificing her <laughs> life for these fake fire drills. Um, but no, so we get out to the parking lot the playground and for some reason kids in my class got on the playground equipment and started playing um I was appalled I will tell you that I honestly was I had to be you know I honestly I felt like if I didn't act like I was shocked by my classmates behavior that I would be just lumped in so I stood still and I'm like oh my gosh look at what they're doing and then other grades joined out in and it was anarchy between these classes. I don't know what went on, but it was started by my class. So there are kids out on the playground messing around, teachers yelling, um, people still trying to file out of the building. And finally, because Miss, for some reason it took a while and Miss Wyant was the last one, of course, out. Um, she wasn't out yet, which I thought was strange. And that's when I started to worry. I'm like, there might, this might be an actual fire. 
And, you know, the kids finally got into line. There's kids laughing. They're punching each other in line. Teachers are shouting. And out comes Miss Martz. Or Miss Wyant, I'm sorry. At the time, she was Miss Wyant. And fire department starts showing up. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is no joke. This is the real deal. Finally, <laughs> you know, out of the many, many years I had been there, it was an actual fire. Not that I was excited. I was just shocked. And so she went back in with the fire department and they came out. And here comes my speech teacher. I was in speech. <laughs> Side note, I was in speech. Um, from first grade until my last grade there in sixth grade. Now, I had a speech impediment at first, but then after that was fixed, my speech teacher really liked me, so I just hung around and she would help me with extra work. Um, so she comes out looking very bashful, and the fire department has a bag of popcorn. She had left a bag of popcorn on, went to do the speech class, and it caught fire. So she was embarrassed, but then out comes Mrs. Wyant with this look on her face and she went off. I mean, I have, I had never seen her yell so much before, but she was yelling and she was yelling at my class and I was just dreading it. Um, we got back in the building and she unloaded on us. She was like the fire department said that they had never seen a school act like that before. And it reflects on the school. Now, if the firemen really said that, I don't know. Because are there really that many fires at schools? I had never... I don't know. Maybe there are. It could be. Dayton could just have a lot of schools on fire. But I think it was an exaggeration to make us feel bad. However, that does not changed the fact that our behavior was disruptive and I had to take the fall, you know, our entire class had to take the fall. And we heard the, this class is the worst class in the school speech for like the 30th time. And it, you know, we had to go out and practice the fire drill over and over again the next day till it was like perfect. Miss Wyatt had this thing. And if any of my old classmates are watching, you know what I mean? If something did not go exactly like it was supposed to, she would make you do it over and over again until it was correct. And it didn't matter if you were doing the right thing. You just got lumped in with the bad apples that were being jerks. So, yeah, that was, oh my gosh, it, it was it was embarrassing. Because I'm sure these firemen were wondering why kids were running around not taking it seriously in our school had an image to uphold and we did not <laughs> uphold it at all. The second story I want to share with you is quite odd. I wish I could explain the layout of my school. There were two different levels. Um, you, the front entrance, because our school was uh, attached to a church, it was like the front entrance was the church entrance and it was bi-level. You could either go upstairs to more classrooms, downstairs to more classrooms, or off to the side where the chapel was. Um, so when you walked in to the front part, the church entrance, you go downstairs to go to classrooms. And right immediately as you went downstairs, there were girls, a girl's bathroom. There's a girl's bathroom. But if you went upstairs... To your right side was the lunchroom. To the left side was the little caddy corner. And around that corner was the boys' restrooms. Now, I liked this boys' restroom because it was more secluded. And if in the off chance I had to, as we said, go boo-boo, um, I would take that one because I, I like my privacy when I take my poops. And so that's what I did sometimes. So... They really didn't like us using those because technically it was kind of like the church bathrooms, but um, we were free to use them. And I kind of expressed to most of my teachers, you know, I have this phobia of going to the bathroom and people smelling. I'm sorry. I know that's graphic or, you know, hearing things. <laughs> so 
I would take those bathrooms. And also it took me a hot minute. You know, I'm not just one of those, like, selling the pot and shit and done. I'm meticulous about it. I know that's a lot of information, but it's crucial to the story. So one day I had to go to the bathroom. I mean, I'm telling you guys, out of the six years that I went to the school, I may be crapped, for lack of a better term, crapped like maybe three times in that entire span. Because that's just how private I am about bathrooms. So I decided to take that bathroom and I told the teacher, you know, I have to go. Don't send a search party for me. I will be a second. And my teachers understood. They know I wasn't playing around. They knew that this was serious. If I had to go number two in the school, it was serious. So I get to the bathroom. And when you walk in the bathroom, there was like four urinals on one side. And then the other side were three stalls. Very private. Very quiet. So I went over into the last stall and as I'm going towards it, the first door flings open and there's someone sitting on the toilet and not only is it someone, but it's a girl. And it's the one girl in the school that I don't like. Her name was Deja. Now I know I'd be calling people out and being like, oh, so-and-so, but I honestly, I can't remember her last name. All I can say is, yeah, I, I could not stand her. She was just rude and she was just not the good kind of weird she was like the mean kind of weird so she flings the door open and she goes what are you doing in here i said well honey you do know that this is the boys bathroom and she goes the girls bathroom is out of order so i sat down And I'm like, there's another person in here. There's no way I'm accomplishing anything. But then after like a minute, I'm like, I I have to go. If I don't, I'm going to be miserable. And, you know, I can't just go back to the room and act like everything's normal. So as soon as I start to go, she starts talking. Like, so how's your day going? When I go home, I'm doing this. Da, da, da. And I'm like, this is not the time to start any sort of a conversation. A, I don't mess with you. And B, I'm trying to do my business and get out. I don't like talking to people when I'm trying to lay an egg. Like, leave me alone. But she keeps talking. And the weird thing is, um, I start talking back to her like we were friends. You know, I was like, this is weird. And I told her that I was like, this is weird because A, you're a girl in the boys' bathroom. And B, we're both taking craps and we're talking. Like, in between the normal bathroom noises, we are just chatting it up about life. Two little fourth or fourth or fifth, whatever, fourth, fifth graders just chatting in the bathroom. And I'm not, (laughs) no pun intended, I'm not shitting you. Um, We probably sat there for a good 20 minutes talking. And then after we were done, I was like, I'll see you at lunch tomorrow. And the weird thing is, the next day at lunch, I thought it was going to be like the breakfast club. You know how like they're like, are we still going to be friends after this? That's how I thought it was going to be. And she saw me in the lunchroom and started telling people, I was trying to go to the bathroom and he was talking to me while I was going to the bathroom. So I got mad because I'm like, there is no way. A, she was new to the school. And B, just not many people liked her and she was getting on my nerves. So I was like, um, for your information, you were in the boys' bathroom. I said, so what's weirder like you you started the conversation and you were in the boys bathroom and people like made fun of us both but I think they were more weirded out at the fact that she was in the boys bathroom for what reason she couldn't have picked another girl's bathroom to take her craps in whatever so the last story I want to tell is one that was probably one of the creepiest things that happened to us 
I mean, now I look back, it's not that creepy, but at the time, it, it like, frightened us for some reason. Um, so at the St. Mark's campus, it's not like our playground was that fantastic. We had a swing set. We had, like, the slides and stuff like that and a basketball court. But across the road, there was another school, which their back faced our front, <laughs> if that makes sense. So their playground was like right in front of our school and we could see it. And our school had made this deal that if the kids from that school wanted to come over to our playground on a Friday, all they had to do was like call up and be like, hey, we're going to come over. And if we wanted to go over there, all we had to do was be like, hey, we're coming over. I mean, the Lutheran school was just that cool that we just would walk on to y'all play playgrounds and take your equipment. <laughs> so it was always a Friday treat and it was just random. Um, this is when I was in fourth grade. We went over once the third grade class and the fourth grade class. We went over and the teachers always made sure that this playtime treat was done like, right before we went home. So, we'd get a second recess, get to go over to that playground, play around, and then we'd go back to our school and go home. It was so much fun. And you'd have the weekend. So, we went over, and at the same time, that school was having their gym class. So, as we were playing, all of a sudden, we're seeing new faces. And I'm like, who are these kids? The other kids didn't seem to really mind or notice us, but I was like, okay, there are these new kids and they weren't playing with us. That's the weird thing. We were playing with ourselves. I'm sorry, that sounded weird. We were playing with each other. Okay, that doesn't sound... The Lutheran school was hanging out with the Lutheran school and the other school was hanging out with the other school. I can't remember their name because it's torn down now. I have no idea what they were called. But it's like, their playground was huge. It had three different, uh, like, jungle gym equipment style with the slides and the rope climbs and the tubes. It was a huge playground. And then, like, a basketball court. So it's like, wait, there's all these new kids. They're from the other school. There's all these new teachers. And no one's mingling. Like, the teachers aren't talking to each other. The kids are not talking to each other. It was awkward because I'm like... You know, what's going on? <laughs> there are like two separate worlds colliding and no one's paying attention. So I found my friends because I'm like, uh, I climbed up the playground equipment and y'all was gone. And, you know, Susie Sheep from this other school was talking to me and telling me to move and get out of my way. And somehow like a, <laughs> like a gang war <laughs> broke out. <laughs> Literally. Like... Our two schools started fighting because these kids were being rude. They had attitudes because they're like, you're on our turf now. And, you know, our school is better. We're not a Christian school. I don't know what was going on. But they were having a fit. And they started fighting. And all of a sudden, you know, the teachers are blowing their whistles. And then the teachers kind of start getting into it, which was awkward. Because at the time, um, if y'all recall, I had Mrs. Brett Hauer and she was feisty. She was short and feisty. And then third grade was still Miss Holloway. Miss Holloway was very passive, but she was like arguing with this teacher because for the probably 30 kids that were out there, like I said, it was their gym time. So it was their gym teacher. And this was a gym teacher, like very hardcore woman she had on the like windbreaker purple I can see her now and she was mean so she was yelling at us and then she's like okay time to go in because basically you know we we ruined it we ruined gym time for this other uh school and when she blew her whistle homegirl didn't know who her kids were so she started like she pointed at me and she's like, get in the school, get in line right now. And I'm like, 
I don't go to your school. And she started like coming up the equipment and trying to grab some of us. Totally unlike, this is something you'd only get away with in the 2000s, in the early 2000s. You know, teachers ain't snatching kids nowadays. You can't even look at a kid nowadays. So she was trying to like wrangle kids up. And I was scared because I'm like, okay, am I going to get in trouble if I go to this new school and, you know, the Lutheran school's over there and they notice I'm gone. Am I going to be in trouble for following? Uh, but, you know, like this teacher was dead set on taking other kids with her. So Miss Holloway stepped in and she's like, those are not your kids. Those are our kids. So that was pretty much the last time that we ever did any activity over there. Which was sad because, like I said, their playground was so neat and we liked playing over there. But not only did it actually frighten us that, you know, this teacher was trying to take us into a new school because she didn't know who her kids was. Um, but the fact that we also were fighting with these other kids and no one was getting along. It was some stuff. We'll see you guys next time on I Can't Make It Up Friday, where I'll continue even more stories that will shock and regale you. In the meantime, you can check out my other videos. I have a plethora of them in my library, um, and I'm always uploading new content in between videos, so look out for those. Go ahead and subscribe and then hit the notification bell uh, so you get notified when I put a video up. You can find my different shows, such as Gory Glam Tuesdays, um, I can't make it up Fridays and Superstar Glam Sundays right here on my channel exclusively. You can also head over to my Instagram where I have new looks every day, literally every day. No matter if my skin is nasty and crusty because, you know, I wipe this makeup off and it dries up. I have new looks every day. So head over to my Instagram, give me a follow and I'll make sure to follow you back and support each other because 2019 is about supporting each other and making me famous. So thank you guys for watching. I love you so much and I will see you in the next video.